Hello and welcome to Candle Wax Blue. And we are on theme Wonders of the World. It's one of my favorite themes in the entire book. The reason being a lot of people wonder what is a lifestyle program or a, you know a architectural world doing in a life skill program. But to me, to become a global citizen, you need to know what is where in the world and appreciate the beauty. And what we do is we take these wonders of the world, I've taken the new and the old seven wonders, and I've used this as a metaphor to talk about the culture of that country and things around it. So today the theme is wonders, the topic is Taj Mahal, but we do not talk only of the Taj Mahal as a wonder, but we talk about something beyond it as well. Let's take a first case of D1. In D1 we are talking only about monuments. And as always I'll explain what the topic is and then perhaps we'll do a sub activity on what can be done. D1 alone is a standalone activity in the entire program. What we're doing in D1 is every civilization have made monuments to showcase their culture, their greatness and preserve their memories. They become legends. So what about the shapes that these monuments are from? So first of all, it's a simple case of identifying these popular monuments. So if you were to go from your left to right, we have the Big Ben, which is in London. We have the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Then we have the Eiffel Tower in France. We have the Statue of Liberty in New York. We have the Pagoda. We have the Angkor Wat in Cambodia. We have the Taj Mahal. And then this is a natural scenic beauty. Perhaps you can use the Ayers Rock in Australia. It's not the Ayers Rock though. But the idea is let them identify which country uh, these monuments belong to. Once they have done it, our main activity is what shapes are these monuments? Perhaps you can change it and say, okay, tell me a monument which are these shapes, a cone. Uh, anything which has a conical thing could be a temple, could be something which is a, even an Eiffel Tower perhaps but is, a, is a tapering cone. Pyramid, of course, pyramid is, is the great pyramid of Giza, but there are other pyramids in the world. That, you know, do you know there are pyramids in Mexico, Chile and even Somalia? Boy, then triangle. Triangle, another common structure you find on the hatch roofs. Cylindrical, maybe the best example of cylindrical is the Qutub Minar or the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So what we send is, we have monuments that you can use with. Of course, this particular activity would be over in no time, unless and until you spend time in building it up. So one of the things I love about the entire program and building it up would be the cardboard castles that you get and you can make an entire range of the the monuments around the world. I mean, of course, it's an investment, but it's a one-time investment for your class. It's an amazing program where, you know, you're using basic cardboards. There are castles to be made. There's Leaning Tower of Pisa. There's the, there's the Eiffel Tower. And it's so amazing. It's so amazing. This is something you can actually invest in. Another thing that you can invest in is a puzzle. So one of the puzzle I recommend is the is the common puzzle called Mad Rat or Mad Hat puzzle. And what it does is it has these entire uh, monuments of the world in it. So you make the puzzle and you can you know play a card game on the monuments. Perhaps you can also do something very simple with these is you can do nothing of these investment but just bring or ask the students to bring empty bottles, plastic bottles. Uh, now, now those are something that you can get. You can have cans of the, you know, the, the cold drink cans, anything with which you can stock up and make a tower. I usually do this in teachers activity and it's a very big popular game where you bring these and perhaps you try to bring two identical ones. You have a discarded CD, you have a pencil, you have a tissue paper, you have a book, you have a cardboard, you have a shoe rack, you have a shoe in it. Everything is given to the group. So you divide the entire class into two groups and you tell them the one who makes the best looking tar, the strongest tar and the tallest tar. So you have three categories. One is aesthetically pleasing, but it should also be strong, structurally good and it should also be long enough. So you can't make a flat tar. And then you give the teams two options, give them 10 minutes each to make the tar. The best part is the teams try to use every single material and that was not a part of your instruction. So once they finish it, they have fun doing it, you also ask them that how did you do the proper exercise? And at that time you inform that I did not ask you to use every single 
equipment which is exactly what these you know uh, we also have a similar activity where say you don't have to use marble you don't have to use uh, you know uh, stones granite steel in all in one structure you can have one structure made of one identical thing and some common elements like cement or sand so this is an exercise in architecture you can do a powerpoint on the best architectural designs if you are or connected to a video there are some amazing videos on exteriors brilliant homes so you can use some video to play them and these would be some clues for students to understand how the monuments work around the world my concept of d2 and d onwards again goes to a very local conversation where of course it's a beautiful way to amalgamate two very important faiths from across the world we are talking a hinduism and islam so what we are saying is as a country india is very diverse and it has a lot of religions spread across not just religions spread across ideologies are so different from south and north so if you were to look at a south indian temple and a north indian temple it would have distinct and different features the word temple itself has lot of synonyms around so we have devalayam or kovil or mandir and what we are doing is we are making a list of so called popular temples across india so i have given some list of the names in d2 so you can find out where is the kali ghat kali temple in west bengal and how is it different from tirumala tirupati balaji temple in andhra pradesh so you need a map of india you need to point out these uh, different uh, locations across and then you say okay who are the deities being worshiped there and one good part about it is you know a kali as a deity is a female deity very popular in west bengal not as popular in tamil nadu and there is a different deity here you know a ganesh a very popular deity the elephant god in maharashtra perhaps not uh, popular in uh, delhi or north india where it could be uh, lord ram or hanuman so what we are looking at is these are the few comparisons you can do based on the ethnicity of the people about the demographics and the choice of deities and worshiping models they have and one thing we are trying to develop among a student here is the idea of tolerance is the idea of respect is the idea of appreciating people's faith and culture then as you move ahead there are these south and north indian temples there are two distinct temples being given in d3 a student needs to now look at these temples and then they need to bring out the differences between as i said very distinct identities come in so which one is a south indian and which one is north indian what do you see what are the conclusions you find from the architectural perspective remember this the entire exercise is a architectural perspective into it so we, you know it would be amazing if you can get an architect in your class and do a guest visit perhaps it will be brilliant so we are saying look at the colors which color which has more colors look at the structure which is more flat and which is more conical uh, look at the kind of people worshiping it. and of course you can go to youtube and maybe check on the uh, the kind of you know temples they have the kind of priests they have even the even the priests the attire is different even perhaps the prasad or what we call the offering is different so it's an amazing kaleidoscope of interfaith itself and within the faith so much of diversity that you can think of as you move ahead on d4 you go to a very distinct different faith faith of the muslims islam again a faith with 1.2 billion followers across the world needs to be studied today we are going through a phase where islamophobia is on a rise people do not understand they confuse a sikh with a muslim so you need to you know touch upon these things not necessarily just talk about them but again shift the focus back on the architectural perspective so what are my architectural perspectives of the taj mahal so we say look a taj mahal is very identical to how a, a masjid or a mosque is created and if you look at a mosque i i love to do the game where a lot of things are with m here so a mosque or a masjid with m there, there is a minar there is a mihrab there is a member so there is a musalla there is a mida which is area for doing ablution or wudu in arabic and why don't you start marking these things why don't you start identifying these things in the structure of it and of course you can go online and take a little help like the clues are given minar are the tall towers that you see the dome which is the you know the most difficult part in any architectural design to to actually create a dome like the 
every every popular mosque would have a dome there and then the dome has these big chandeliers if you have seen huge uh, uh, mosque of the gulf specially then there is a prayer hall which is a, again arabic word called the musalla then mehrab is a is a specific area perhaps what you call you know in in the equivalent for a church would be the pulpit the, the mehrabs also have some prayer areas a niche you know the, where, where the leader who is called the imam or equivalent is a is a pundit or a priest the the imam is the equivalent of it then of course there is a member which is exactly the pulpit where the where the imam or the high priest stands and gives sermons the prayer rugs all across the the, the muslims have distinct way of praying you can show a video of it and this becomes a culturally enlightening session there then again the way we did with a mandir or a temple we go and start doing of the distinct feature of a mosque how did it evolve what do you think was the arabic calligraphy into it why do you think a mosque comes with a specific minar what is the purpose of minar so there is a concept called the adhan or the call to prayer like the bells of the church or the temple so you have a distinct way the human voice is used here instead of a drum or a bell where your call you know you would be amazing as at the words of this this prayer and perhaps it will be great to you know list down the words of the prayer and ask a student to reflect and say look it is a universal faith like the anthems we see of all countries the faith calls are also very similar all of them want people to have submission in the god the deity they worship and believe that the god is just he is merciful he believes in equality he believes in loving everybody because the beauty of the faith transcends a particular faith itself so this would be d1 uh, the d2 to d5 an entire exercise in the architecture but you also doing a little cultural tolerance and respect mutual respect of faith as you move ahead to the last segment the last activity on this part we are looking at d6 and what we say is we move now to the specific of the taj mahal perhaps in your teachers manual you got enough notes on the taj mahal it was built by shah jahan in memory of his wife the mumtaz uh, and and he both are buried there it's made from uh, you know uh, of marble beautiful elite marble on the banks of river yamuna and you've done an entire story around it so taj mahal has inspired generations from movies songs book people have used it to share their romantic ballads to perhaps you can ask them to write a romantic ballad Uh, why don't they write a small poem on on romance perhaps they're mature enough romance need not always be between two genders and individual it could be a romance for god itself or a romance for the animal or mother nature so you know you can encourage them and give a nice twist to it not always the one version that we have heard but one beautiful thing that we are actually asking them to do in d6 with this new uh, what do you call the the fb generation the digital natives that they are the taj mahal is one of the first monument in the world to have its own twitter account so the you have the handle at the rate taj mahal or, or, or the, as the, as the european called taj mahal of course we know the better pronunciation being from same country why don't you ask them to make a facebook or instagram page or perhaps at whatever time you're listening if something new has come up that trending social media page allow them the liberty to draw sketch what they like and give them the opportunity to go go to the computers or open the ipads or allow them to bring that and actually make a facebook page it would be a great way not only for doing on the chart and sketching it but actually going online and making a page of the taj mahal perhaps they can go and check the handle at taj mahal and see what it says they can look at the latest tweet they can perhaps retweet it from your account if they are, they are too uh, young enough to have their own twitter uh, pages but what is interesting is they can go and see the social media of not an individual but of a monument so that's my first activity to do on d6 The second one I would like them to do on D7 is the ads that Taj have come up with. A very popular ad that involves India's legendary tabla player, a musical instrument, the tabla is Dr. Z- uh, is Zakir Hussain. Dr. Zakir is uh, the president's name. So what he says, one of the punchline in the movie, in the ad, he says is Wah Taj Wah to sell tea. Right. So, could you use the word Mahal again to create your own advertisement for a new laptop brand? Now, um, that's one exercise we've given. You can open up and say, okay, why don't you open the word Mahal to open, say, uh, uh, an amusement park for that matter? 
can you design one or even use a new tagline or a slogan so what we are doing is we are giving them the first taste of the world of advertisement first taste of the world of a jingle perhaps they can create an entire ad they can make a jingle maybe you know a, a spin off from this is what are the popular jingles they know of can they recall you know i'm loving it or just do it or ting ding 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 the britannia one or the amul girl you know what we saying is you have to create an identity around and that's what makes it's called the stickiness factor a very popular book on that is made to stick by the chip and dan brothers which says that the stickiness has to be following very very ordinary rules and one of them is make it simple to make it simple people remember it make it memorable uh, you know give give a kind of a storyline to it so you give these examples to your students and this is an entire exercise on monument hopefully from day one they play with it they, they can actually do a clay dab model of this then they they go to the cultural part of two very important faith and the third one they come on taj mahal and they create a instagram page or a, or a facebook page and then they come to make a ad of their own for this very popular and beautiful romantic monument hello and welcome to candle blue we are on the e theme on nation building a nation is a symbol of people's culture you know you belong to a nation our patriotism emanates from the fact how much we know about a nation and what i really understand there are four f's to understand a culture four f's so remember festival food fabric and flag and these are the four f's that we are here trying to promote in a nation building so whatever we talk about and we'll go through some nations around in this nation building concept where we talk about what is popular there and how can we relate to it so in this section festival what we are talking about is we've gone to a favorite country perhaps if you look at the uh, the kind of uh, you know uh, china's uh, talk topic we've been using from violet to blue now so we're taking the chinese new year it's the dragon new year as a symbol china uses different symbols so there was the year of the pig the year of the uh, cat or you know the year of the uh, uh, crop so they have different symbols around and we've taken dragon which is like the fifth position among the chinese animal the people who are born in the year of the dragon are said to be strong brave and healthy so that's the kind of uh, symbolism we are using around and as we always say what are we really going to teach about in e1 is just the concept that how is dragon related to you do you really think dragon stands for this perhaps you can talk about the famous dragons that they have seen now of course when from dragon we can go to norse lesh which is a, a scandinavian uh, war horse kind of a sea creature but other than that you can talk about the fire emitting dragons is it a myth or do you believe in it for example if you show them a clipping of the the lord of the ring the hobbit story where there is a smug the dragon and the dissolution of the smug where they can talk about you know the funny part where you go close to the dragon and dragon tries to you know eat you up all the famous dragons that you have the three dragons in in the popular you can take these youtube clips of of the famous dragon and show them and say why do people are fascinated with this creature the fact that it is huge it can blow fire it is unreal it's mythical and now since we spoke about first we just did a you know a little discussion on dragon so first activity before even we go on page e1 is about the mythical beat each of the each of the class can be divided into tps think pair and share and each one have to come up with one mythical beast and probably what you can do is you can discuss the mythical beast and say not everybody comes to unicorn or mermaids there are many more so let us find out what mythical beast you can think of you know there is something called the hypocrites not hypocrite hypocrites you know half man and half uh, uh, a horse kind of thing or wolverine or werewolf itself the man which becomes a wolf on a full moon night mermaids are very popular you know these beautiful fishes that are human in nature they help people they are small it could be a myth that people have seen dolphins or they are the flying wing horse which we know as pegasus perhaps unicorn so you can talk a lot about these mythical creatures what, what in the world makes them so uh, fascinating so how are they different from your favorite avengers character and this could be a good class activity to talk about and we can do what we do with the mythical creature is the shipwreck in shipwreck what you do you take up a famous character and you 
def, you know you 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 kind of defend the character and say if there was a shipwreck why would your character should survive or if there was only one uh, life jacket why should only your character get you can play the same shipwreck game with your mythical beast so you know if everyone has chosen a unicorn then you put a chit there with all the names i told you and then you say okay you pick up your your shipwreck uh, character and you may get a pegasus you may get a unicorn you may get a mermaid you may get a uh, uh, you know a werewolf and say now since you got it everyone have to take a minute and defend why is the character so important and others are not perhaps you can add a dragon itself to it in e2 we know that real dragons don't exist so we mm. break all the myth that was around we all the hype we created here and then we say though there are some animals which resemble a dragon so we have got these animal listed they have to rank them in the closeness they have to dragon and why don't we use this as an activity as i always do spill it up and make a huge chart and say what are the common things they have that resemble a dragon and then what is a special about dragon they don't have so we have iguana which is more like a huge chameleon or or you know it 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 can change its color what is so special about it? is it the looks that looks like dragon is it the fearsomeness it's not a huge animal though crocodile is bigger it's sharper it's dangerous in water so you know the nile crocodiles where uh, you, there's a story of moses being thrown in the nile where crocodiles are all around why is this like a dragon or why is it not like a dragon a bat a strange creature but among the things written here only this bat can fly and bat by the way is the only it's a mammal isn't it uh, a, a mammal why is it a mammal though it has uh, you know wings and flies because it lays its bird it doesn't lay eggs so we have these kind of challenges we have for them it's a naturalist uh, learners paradise they can talk about it dinosaurs another is it a make believe character dinosaurs or are, did they really exist if dinosaurs exist can you talk a little about how the dinosaurs were uh, you know uh, extinct or are uh, from the face of the earth was it a meteorite was it the ice age was it something else was it a bigger creature was it the humans who hunted them of course we came much later the dinosaur age the jurassic age as it is called and then in e2 we have the last animal which is the komodo dragon and you can talk about this Indonesian species very famous where you can compare what's special about a komodo dragon look at the tongue it flies out and even each animal you can go online check up some uh, facts for for these animals find out what are special about them they can make a fact finder and they can share to the class what these creatures are all about so that's the first thing what festival of course now since we have spoken about the four f for the festival i add a fifth one or the sixth one it's called finance famous people as well so what we are saying is since you took a country china and which is at a higher level now why don't you add some more to it so we spoke about this one festival the dragon new year is there something else you should know about china what about the food they eat and of course the only thing you know is the chinese food what is momo a chinese food find a little more about it fabric so what's the fashion sense in fa china what kind of dress do they wear Uh, you know what's the traditional dress of course the flag of china china is so smart it gave itself five stars on the flag what does the flag represent what's the finance part of it what's the chinese currency call is it called yen why is it called yen and who are the famous people so who is mao mao zang who is the chinese national hero what was he special about so all these are the the areas you must work on as you do a e1 and this is that we do nation building you learn as always since we are based here in india we always make a relationship between our country and this country so one of the last time the prime ministers or the presidents of the countries met how was the relationship do we have any kind of problem for example india and china had border issues in in arunachal pradesh dokhlam so what are the trade relationships like a little bit of research you can present it like a news reader so you can make a class into different areas and then a news reader presents what is the whole idea about it will be fun it will be really good and it's also part of the global quotient and global dimensions as we put in our book okay so we've taken a lot of time to explain e1 and into two we rush to e3 and we go to a new country called spain the popular festival of spain is la tomatino it's a very very uh, you know interesting festival where people all around spain you know gather together they throw tomatoes to each other very similar to some of the other festivals especially holi in india where you play with colors or there is a you know cold water festival in thailand and burma where you throw cold water in each other how different is tomatino there is another country uh, where 
I remember if Mexico, it's it's the same thing with oranges. So you throw oranges at one another. It, it could be Holland. You can check it up. But it's interesting. So how is La Tomato not different? Is it fun? Is it interesting? Or is it yuck? Or you want to save the tomatoes? So you know you can do a lot of it. Do research on La Tomato. You know, speak about it. Discuss what this festival involves. Uh, perhaps you can. You know you, we will talk about using tomatoes in the class. I won't want you to smash it up. But maybe. Who knows, you can bring a ketchup bottle and I don't want you to just throw and, and spoil it. But a quick question, a case study right now is, is tomato a fruit or a veggie? Now this is interesting, a lot of you would say, yeah, it's a vegetable. But actually if you look at it, there is already a discussion that tomato could be a fruit, the way it grows up. And also there is a political reason people didn't want to pay tax on it and that's why they call it fruit and not a vegetable. Interesting. But tomato by itself is very, very uh, popular, you know, vegetable thing. You use tomato puree, you use tomato ketchup, you add tomato in, in areas so you can use those experiences and say, where is a tomato used? In salad. So it says that tomato could be a fruit, but the wisdom is you don't put it in a salad. Or do you put tomato in a salad? Or in a fruit salad, at least you don't put it. I'm skipping E4 for the time being and just jumping to E5. And I'm saying, E5, since we spoke a lot of tomato, you could actually ask students to bring tomato and make their own tomato sandwich. And, you know, it's not difficult tomato sandwich. All you do is slice it up, put some lettuce, put some cucumber, nice bread with cheese into it, and a class can have a good brunch together. Also, if you are a more of a, the, you know, the cooking kind and a little more uh, experimental, you can actually try and make tomato puree, if not tomato ketchup. Or maybe look at the process of how do you make a tomato ketchup. Interesting. So you can add these ideas into it and, and perhaps students can understand a very different world of what it is. Now, we spoke about tomato and Spain. So again, we go to the four F's of culture and say, what does a Spanish flag look like? What's the country look like? Spain is known to be a beautiful country. You know, you have the Spanish dance, the Florence, uh, the, the areas, they have, they have Seville. Of course, Spain is known for football. So the culture of Spain comes into that way. Madrid, the capital, what is it about? You can talk about the Spanish money when the country went through debt and, and then what her, your country's relationship with Spain. And again, you talk a lot more about the country in general. Perhaps every time we do this nation building, I would like you to make a huge map of the country, stick it in your class, do it in your binders. So it's fun to know about a new country. And then if you were to fly to Spain, what would the best, cheapest airline? They can go on to make my trip and find out the airline's options. What is the Spanish national airline call? Who is leading Spain? Oh, of course, when you speak of Spain, can you not talk about bullfighting and CR7, Cristiano Ronaldo and Real Madrid and Barcelona? So there's a world that you can talk about of Spain. The last activity on E4 is people's debating, as I mentioned that. And all I want is think of 10 red things. Not difficult. We've given you a lot of clues here. So, but each red thing you can speak more about it. For example, especially the double decker bus is an iconic London symbol. So you can talk about little more of red. Why is red called the love? Uh, is it uh, is a heart really a shape? It is the red heart or the red ruby, the red cherry and the red apple, and the whole story around apple. You can talk about Snow White and the apple, Newton apple, Steve Jobs and the apple, the rose, the other flowers that are red. Perhaps, you know, you can think of a red daffodil, red dress, red crayons, strawberries, sandals, balloons, lipstick. So, the world of red and they can make a chart, you can play a game around it. And this would take us to the entire concept of Spain and red there. The last one is very fun. It's, it's really interesting. We are concept of Halloween. So, E6, we are talking about nation building. But of course, we are also breaking a lot of stereotypes and myths. Now, when we talk about Halloween, we are talking especially about the American celebration on 31st October when Halloween is celebrated with great gusto and fun. And it's also a part of a lot of movies where, especially scary movies, you dress up and come. So the whole idea is you have these pumpkins which are uh, put up in different places. People tell scary stories to each other. They also watch scary movies. I, I can't recommend a movie called Creeped Out. Creeped Out is available on Netflix. You can download some of the episodes. It's a very, very nicely done, scarier part, but a lot of good message into it. You can think of some easier ones also. It is another one which people might like, Stephen King's movie, uh, if it's scary movies really work. But we are doing a lot of scary part here. 
and Halloween is about people going and it's called trick and or treat. So they go and they, they have their costumes and people give them sweets. And, and, and what is the origin of Halloween? Why do people celebrate it? You can do a lot of research on that. And since we will mark E7 and E8 are beyond that, you can stick to United States because that's the country we spoke about. And everything we spoke about, the culture, the food, the Washington DC as the capital, dollar, who do not, do not know dollar, who does not know Donald Trump. And why is United States so popular? Why is it that it is the most powerful country in the world? What are the stripes and the stars representing on the flag? What's the national uh, anthem of it? Uh, you United States is one of the most successful Olympic country. Why is that? And an entire case study on United States can be done with Halloween as a backdrop. We take E7 now and Halloween as a concept moves further and we say, why don't you separate the fact from the myth? People have used this concept and they have made it very, very uh, you know, superstitious in their own region. And this is where we break the taboos and you are you're welcome to listen to a lot of ghost stories around it but we are you know we're breaking the taboo and saying okay so what are the myths around knocking on the wood for good luck is it right and what are the origin of these myths so in the olden time it was said that people believed that the spirits lived in the wood so they would knock so the spirits would not harm them you know, fun a black cat crossing so popular so viral so you know it could also be not just black cat it would be crows so there is another one which says crows. So each one of them having these things, an ordinary cat, what harm can she can do? But that's the way it is. Trimming the nails at night. It's a very popular one, at least in the families I know of. The people will get lost if you trim your nails at night. Oh, what a correlation. How, how did this come about? Friday the 13th. Oh, this is so popular. The origin of it is Jesus had 13 disciples at his last supper. And that is why it is considered unlucky. Believe me, it is so unlucky that they are... Eh, eh, you know the buildings which do not have 13th floor I have personally seen airlines the ones I have flown across you know where there will be 12th seat and the 14th and this 13th is not there so you can find out why is 13th so unlucky in Australia 87 is unlucky you will be surprised why 87 so you can check 100 minus 13 is 87 so you know people have different ways of turning it don't walk under a ladder rabbit's foot or horseshoe the mark of seat and 666 making a wish when you see a shooting star which is nothing but a meteorite falling in and then crossing your fingers so many of them so you can do an entire class presentation on myth versus fact why is myths are bad you can add another 10 myths of yours and you can shatter these myths around in case you still want to hear some fun i've done a series for very small kids called haunted house with zingi zainab so you know you can look at one of the editions have a fun around it and add your own haunted stories and scary stories around it so this brings an end to a long picture on nation building we're breaking some taboos around it and hopefully you'll enjoy this as much as i enjoyed creating it for you hello and welcome we are listening to candle blue and we are on f the theme is character building and the most important character that we are really looking at today's time in the time of internet and laziness is hard work. There is no substitute for hard work. Perhaps smart work will, will do but really hard work is what we are talking about. And our first F1 speaks about a country which I think would be called the origin of hard work. You can't think beyond the hard working Japanese. What have they done in the field of hard work is amazing. So before even I go to the talk about what haiku and what Japan uh, has done with the poetry, we speak about Japan and continuing from a last theme of nation building, Japan as a country has an amazing culture. You know, in 1945, after the two bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the country was out, down, destroyed. But yet, with its persistence, with its goals, with its planning and hard work, today, Japan is a leading industry in, it could be electronics, it could be car, it could be digital, Japan, it could be steel, and Japan has done it. So, you can do a small bit of case study on Japan pre-World Cup, uh, pre-World War, the Imperial Japan, what happened after the World War, when the atomic bomb was dropped, and then post that what Japan has done and how it has changed. Japan takes a lot of pride in its culture. So, one of the things, a traditional form of Japanese poetry is called the haiku. Now, haiku is a very ordinary, simple poem of three lines. The first and the last lines of haiku have five syllables, the middle have seven, seven syllables. Syllables are not words, but that should be fine for us. You know, if you can just look at some more. 
So we've given an example of a Japanese haiku, and here is something in part. You know, you, you know, to teach you this in a haiku way, I am first with phi, then seven in the middle, phi n to begin, phi again to end. Now you you could see the haiku is not rhyming as some of the poems you expect English to rhyme, but haiku is that's the way it is done. Haiku could be about animals, season, children, country, flag, you know, some fun festivals. So we have got famous haiku poems on hard work. The value of hard work is appreciated by those who do it. You know, that's it. So we have given some examples on haiku in F2. Read the haiku and why don't you give the title of it? Just give some title to the haiku. So it is a fun to it, you know, whatever you would like to. It's a very, very simple way. So you did an entire case study in Japan. That took a bit of your time. You perhaps, as I always recommend, make a nice flag of Japan. That will help your students do a little coloring around. It's not the most, perhaps one of the most easiest flag in the world to draw. It's just a red circle which symbolizes the sun. Then you teach haiku. You do the haiku with these uh, title thing and F3. We actually ask them to make haikus on common topics. So I've given you sleep, sacrifice and help. You can choose any four or five topics on haiku and create haikus. And you do a little bit of research on what a syllable is. So it will be easier for you to understand and prepare. So this is my first activity on hard work coming from Japan. If you can think of a paddle activity as you always want because sometimes we have enough time, we want to do more, why don't you dwell on the poems itself? What are the popular poems in the world? You know, uh, uh, what is the difference between start with nursery rhyme and a poem? Interesting, isn't it? Like how is Humpty Dumpty, Twinkle Twinkle, Baba Black Sheep different from poems? Well, they are poems but they are called nursery rhyme because their target audience is very small kid, toddlers. We all grew up, we remember the nursery rhyme so well. As we grow, then the poems come in. Poems are longer, they have more rhythm to it. There could be different kind of poems. You can do a research on it. There might be a poet in your class and we never knew. Sometimes these are art forms and expression we have never ever tried. You know, every culture, every language has a lot of respect for poems. It's beautiful, it's very catchy. You can convey a lot of messages. One of my favorite is, you know, the woods are lovely, dark and deep. I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep by Robert Frost. You can talk about that poem, oh, one by Rabindranath Tagore. Right? We shall overcome, we shall overcome, one day we shall overcome. Very popular ones, hum honge kamiyab, as in, as in, you know, a, a, a local language that you can speak about. So, you can choose what poems are popular. The ones I mentioned are just very common ones. You might have better ones. I would love you to share a poem with your students. Ask them what poems you have. Bring a book of poems. Read something about. Sometimes just developing a taste for it. You know, how you develop a taste for certain food. You might not like it. You might not have it. But once you try eating it over and over, you like it. The same thing goes with poem. Try downloading some of the most popular poems. You know, the, there's a beauty to lyrics. What's the difference between a poem and a song then? And you know, there's some really beautiful lyrics out there. It touches your heart, the melody, the rhythm, the kind of sorrow and joy you have in it. I remember as a part of my school, I had an entire book of poems and that's when I started falling in love with it. So you can choose, create a list of your favorite poems and then stick the best ones. A small tidbit to it, in, in, in the older time uh, Arab world, uh, you know, the Arabs were very proud of the poetry, which is Arabic of course. And they would have an annual poetry competition where the best poem would be stuck on the, the, the Kaaba, the black uh, structure that is the annual pilgrimage for the Muslims. But this was the level of poetry that people have. So perhaps you can just do a poem competition in your class. That brings me to F4. And F4, we move from Japan to a different area, the elephants. What are we talking about elephants? Is the elephants, you know, of course, a natural animal, huge bees, beautiful, are actually made to work at the lock factory and perhaps this activity came from my own example of growing up in Andaman and Nicobar and there is a small island called the Hut Bay and in Hut Bay when I went with my father who was a captain we, I really saw the elephants taking the log it was very cruel it was difficult and perhaps I shot a letter to then environment ministry Manika Gandhi and I got a reply and today the elephant log work is banned so why don't you use this as a case study Give this example to your students that perhaps the author of the book shared this story. It's interesting when you talk about personal stories. And we've talked about a character called Tara who uses the idea 
to write about the hard work that the elephants are made to at the log factory. You can make a fictional story uh, of the elephants in the Hud Bay, which is an island in Andaman, or somewhere real in Africa, in, in maybe in, in, in Somalia or Sudan or Kenya, and you say we have to protect these animals and not use them. And then you have to write a paragraph about the inhuman conditions of the elephant. The web is given on F5. So you can use the web. The web is an idea generating diagram. What we are saying is put the main key core idea in the middle and put the sub ideas in the in the vicinity. So you write about the African elephants and the Asian elephants. That's one. They are made to pick heavy logs and you can write the the weight of the log. So a log is roughly between 75 to 100 kgs. It's like and you know the best way to tell this is not just 75 kg. It's as heavy as a truck. So an elephant is made to lift a truck. You know that's how Steve Jobs said. Creatives came with the mp3 player. They said you have 4 GB data you can fill in. Steve Jobs came and said you can put 1000 songs. Which one is more appealing? Of course, the thousand song ones. So you change it. You say an elephants are made to lift not one but twenty trucks every day. Would you like it? And that's the way you write up. Become an author. So this is a piece where I'm actually making students work hard. Of course, all fun and no play make Jack a dull boy. We want them to write. We want them to get excited about it. And I'm sure you can get them excited. They are chained now. So what is happening is as calves, you know, the baby elephants, they are chained from the time they are born. As they grow up, the elephant can break the chain, but mentally they are so subjugated, they don't even want to break the chain. So what we are doing is, besides physical torture, you are also doing a mental torture for this gentle beast. Then, the amount of hours they are made to work, 7 hours, oh, that's a lot of work then. So, uh, usually what's a good time to work in a school? Then you might come and say, that's slave work in school as well, I don't want to go to controversy. But elephants are made to work for 7 hours, maybe with a small break. And then, the more important, the food given to them is very rare scarce. So using the idea web, you can generate some more ideas, you can write some more points into it, you can create an entire story and then perhaps if they are real stories, you can find out where really the elephants are made to work and why don't you shoot a letter to the World Wildlife Federation or, or to the local Ministry of Education or Environment, perhaps you get published in somewhere. So that would be amazing. Two parallel sub activities along with this and the first one is ask them to draw an elephant i mean believe me there is no better joy than teaching somebody how to draw and i've learned the elephant drawing along with horses and something else it may not always look good but at least you might end up just making a republican uh, symbol for elephant as in the united states there are two parties in the united states some trivia one symbol is a donkey and one's an elephant so you can make that as well but elephant drawing is easy like gandhiji's you can just teach them that sub activity number two is you can actually make a comparative chart of the asian and african elephant so the african elephant have bigger tusks they have got huge uh, ears you know they are bigger they are of course living in africa the asian elephants are smaller they live in some parts of india some parts of thailand they are also called siamese elephants and you can write an entire story around it so that would be amazing a third one if you want to add to it the story of the six blind men and the elephant it's a very interesting story you can enact the story out that the people look at the elephant one says it's like a ladder one says it's a it's a stick one says it's a, it's a it's a the trunk is like a rope or, or a pillar amazing story you can tell that as well so that brings an end to the second activity on character building and the third activity is a very very nice activity of an athlete so we are looking at f6 and deepa karmakar is someone who made india proud for her olympic preparation where she worked hard to win india a medal in the olympic so what you can do is you can read a little about this wonderful girl what kind of practice she is into gymnastics she is into what kind of gymnastic you can talk a bit about history you know i only know in the name of nadia komenesi the first girl who won 10 out of 10 in gymnastic then what you do is you look at Deepa's routine and then you give stars to it. So if it's very important, you give three stars to Deepa. If it's necessary, you do two stars and it's one star for regular star. And you can add to it. So on F7, you can go and list an entire series of what is a routine like. So example, eat healthy food. Is it important? And they can mark in the, in the books. So of course, it's five stars or you know, you can add a special bonus star if it's very important. Sleep for eight hours. Perhaps six could will do. So you might give three to it. You know, I'm giving an example. Exercise. Listen to a coach. Watch television. 
uh, travel for competition you know if she doesn't travel does she win so that's important it's a necessary right so it's a part of it it's not like she has to force herself she will go why don't you add another five things for a routine and this would be a very very interesting activity on hard work so you can actually give the virtues of hard work it's very important to use a real example than giving vague examples that you must work hard after you've done the examples of deepa karmakar and a routine now we take this activity further and we take two more characters whose routine will define uh, so since we did sports let's talk on author so what could an author's routine be yeah, of course do authors have to work hard of course you know there is something called the writer's block teach them that authors just can't write or they don't they're worried about writing so so author may not have to do exercise so much but they may have to watch more tv or read more books you know or travel more for just understanding the idea so why don't they make a routine for an author what kind of routine and then add things that authors should do to increase take one more character and here this time we will uh, you know perhaps take a character of who do you want to take a character uh, a news anchor or a uh, airline pilot or let's take up an a, a military person so soldiers and what does a soldier have to do or perhaps a movie actor you know you can pick up anyone that you like and then make the routines of these people and let the people know what and how important hard work is so one last trivia was the difference between hard work and hardly working all right it's it's a, it's a common joke people say that hardly is you really don't work but more interesting you can do is what's the difference between hard work and smart work make a nice chart that sometime people work too hard you know it could be like an essay competition and you're focusing on writing the right thing you know just write just write and then you can improve later a lot of people are perfectionist so sometime they are so big a perfectionist they want to do the right way and we say do it and do it in a way that is easy on yourself which is called smart work so i hope you work a little smarter and you enjoy these activities give your feedback and make sure we build a character through hard working thank you